Now let us see about cardiovascular system. See, cardiovascular, cardio means heart, vascular is blood vessel. You cannot separate them, both of them work together. Heart is a muscular pump. The job of heart is it has to pump the blood so that the blood reaches to every tissue and organ. How it is reaching to tissues and organ? Through blood vessels. So that is the reason why both of them are combined together to say cardiovascular system. What are the functions of this cardiovascular system? Cardiovascular system will be pumping blood to each and every cell and tissues. So blood carries oxygen as well as nutrients. Both of them are important. What are the food we take? The important nutrients, vitamins, reaches to every part through blood circulation. The oxygen which we inhale, it gets, it combines with hemoglobin, carries oxygen, it is given to each and every cell. So all the cells uses this nutrients as fuels and oxygen in mitochondria and finally we all generate ATP. So our survival is based on the functioning of cardiovascular system. So this is the significance of cardiovascular system. Now, let us understand how the heart functions, what is the anatomy of heart, how the circulation is, is going on through the heart. Now, see heart has got four chambers, one, two, three, four. The top chambers are known as <coughs> atria. Atrium. Or oracle is also there. Now, the bottom chambers are known as ventricles. So you have two atria, two ventricles, totally four chambers are there. The other thing. See, I have purposefully filled with blue and red colors. The reason is, see, this side is considered as right side. And this one is left side of the heart. So left side is this one, right side is this one. Now, the right chambers, both of them will be blue in color. The reason is they contain deoxygenated blood. Whereas left side, they have oxygenated blood is there. Let us begin with here. See, left ventricle is important one. The left ventricle, when left ventricle contracts, contraction is known as systole. When left ventricle contracts, this oxygenated blood goes through this, is known as iota. This iota is the major artery which is carrying oxygenated blood to each and every tissue of the body. So it all starts with left ventricle. When left ventricle contracts, oxygenated blood moves from here to iota. So this one is iota. So iota carries oxygenated blood, which is supplied to every cell and every tissue. Now what happens in cells and tissue? Once the blood is reaching there, they will take all the nutrients and oxygen. Once they take that oxygen, blood will become deoxygenated blood. So again, the colors will indicate the amount of oxygen. Oxygenation will cause us a slight reddish color. Deoxygenation results in a kind of bluish color. So once the oxygen is removed, then the blood gets into veins. From the veins, it gets into heart. From the veins, the blood gets back to heart. Now, the veins which are carrying blood back to the heart are known as vena cava. Vena cava. You have inferior vena cava and superior vena cava. That means inferior vena cava will take deoxygenated blood from the lower parts of the body to the heart, whereas superior vena cava brings back deoxygenated blood from neck, head region. So the superior one, this one is known as superior vena cava, the lower one is known as inferior vena cava. So these vena cavas carry deoxygenated blood into this part of the atria. What is this? This is right atria. So all the deoxygenated blood gets into right atria. When atria contracts, this blood comes down to ventricle. When atria contracts, blood is pumped into ventricle. Now, when ventricle contracts, the blood is taken back to the lungs. See, so these are lungs. Why lungs? Because lungs will exchange gases. The deoxygenated blood gets into lungs. Due to the gases exchange, oxygen gets into blood. So from this right ventricle, 
due to the contraction that is carried to this lungs. Now, from here, see this specific thing is carrying blood to the lungs. This is known as pulmonary artery. So this pulmonary artery is carrying blood from this right ventricle, deoxygenated blood from this right ventricle to the lungs. Now what happens in lungs? Gases exchange occurs. Once gases exchange is occurred, the deoxygenated blood will become oxygenated blood. So this oxygenated blood from lungs, it moves to left atria. So from left atria, all this thing is contains oxygenated blood. That's why it is depicted red in color. Now, once this atria contains oxygenated blood, when atria contracts, the blood comes down to left ventricle. Now, what happens when left ventricle contracts? Again, the circulation starts. This is how the blood circulation goes up. Again, see, from lungs, this blood vessel is carrying oxygenated blood to left atria. And this is known as pulmonary vein. Pulmonary vein. Now understand these things. Heart is made up of four chambers. The top ones are atria, bottom ones are ventricles. You have two atria, two ventricles. Right side of the heart, like right atria, right ventricle contains deoxygenated blood. Whereas left part contains oxygenated blood. Now oxygenated blood moves to every, uh, it reaches to every part of the body through iota. When left ventricle contracts, blood pumped to iota. From this iota, every organ gets the blood. All the organs take up the nutrients and oxygen, and the blood becomes deoxygenated blood. This deoxygenated blood, with the help of vena cava, inferior vena cava and superior vena cava, the deoxygenated blood reaches to right atria. Once it gets there, when atria contracts, blood comes down to this ventricle. From this ventricle, again, the blood is moving to lungs through pulmonary artery. In the lungs, gases exchange at this. Deoxygenated blood becomes oxygenated blood. Again, it goes to left atria by pulmonary vein. So this is the brief anatomy. But the movement of blood from atria to ventricle, from ventricle to this pulmonary artery as well as to this iota, are controlled by certain things called as Valves. Now, what is the use of a valve? Valves will ensure unidirectional blood flow. That means, see, from atria to ventricle, you have these valves are there, these things. They are called as atrioventricular valves because they are in between atrium and ventricle. Now, atrioventricular valves' job is they allow unidirectional flow of blood from atrium to ventricle. When atria contracts, whatever the blood is there in atrium falls down to ventricle. Only in one direction, not the other way. If the other way, if, if, if there is a chance of going in other way, the ventricles will close down. Because of this, they enable unidirectional flow. Now again, you have differences are there. You can see here, three valves are there here, two valves are there. So on the right side, you have three valves, hence they are known as tricuspid valves. This is on the right side. Whereas on the left side, you have two cusps. See, cusp means a kind of shape. So two cusps are there, hence they are known as bicuspid wall. See, bicuspid wall is also known as mitral wall. Both of them are same. So what are these two? These are atrioventricular valves. So we have two valves that are there. Tricuspid, bicuspid. Tricuspid is there in the right side, whereas bicuspid is there on the left side. Not only this, some other valves are there. See, when right ventricle contracts, deoxygenated blood is moving from this ventricle to lungs. It is moving through pulmonary artery. So at this pulmonary junction, again, you have valves are there. They are known as pulmonary, pulmonary valves. So pulmonary wall is present in this right ventricle. So when right ventricle contracts, the blood is going from right ventricle to lungs, and it is the unidirectional flow is enabled by valves. Again, when this ventricle contracts, the blood moves only in this direction. 
towards the lungs, not the other way. That unidirectional flow is enabled by pulmonary valve. Come here. Now, from here, what happens is, from the left atria, when, when it is contracts, the blood flows in urine direction low and it reaches to ventricle. When left ventricle contracts, that is going to iota. Here again, a valve is there. It is known as iotal valve. Again, it enables the movement of blood from ventricle to only iota. So totally, we have got four kinds of valves are there. Atrioventricular valves, two valves are there. Tricuspid valve, bicuspid valve. In case of right side, you have pulmonary valve is there. Another one, on the left side, you have aortic valve is there. So these are about valves. So these are all the anatomical parts of heart. Atria, ventricles, lungs, iota, all these valves. Now, leaving this, some other things. See, heart, the basic job of heart is, it is a muscular pump which will give contractions. Now, this contraction is known as systole. Systole means contraction. Contraction could be either atria or ventricle. Both of them, anything, the contraction is known as systole. Whereas, see, heart not only contracts, it relaxes too. The relaxation is known as diastole. So, cardiac contraction is known as systole. Cardiac relaxation is known as diastole. One more basic thing. See, when there is a signal, when heart contracts, it contracts coherently. That means both the atria will contract together. Look at my hands. Imagine these two are atria. When the signal comes, both the atria contracts together. It is not individual. Both of them will contract together. In case of ventricle also, both the ventricles will contract together at the same time. Now, how these contractions are enabled? It is because of a signal which is generated from this right atria. There, is, there are specialized cells known as nodal cells. The nodal cells will start signal generation. When the signal comes, the contraction starts. And these nodal cells are known as SA node. S A node. Now, sino atrial node, SA node. So the entire cardiac contractions will be starting from SA node. It gives a signal, and that signal propagates to this entire atrium. Once the signal is generated, it moves to both the atriums, and because of that, both the atrium contracts together. Now, after the atria, at this junction, you have one more node is there, which is known as AV node, atrioventricular node. So you have two nodal cells are there, nodal tissues. The job of nodal tissue is to generate a signal. Remember, heart has got a unique feature known as automaticity. Entire our body parts will be under the control of nervous system. Whenever a neuronal signal comes, then only the cells will respond and do so much. But heart is a unique one. Without nervous innervation, they can give their own contraction. That ability is called as automaticity. And this automaticity is because of these two nodal cells. They can generate their own signal without neural stimulation. Yesterday also I have explained, you can see this, you know, some time ago for BFARM graduates, there used to be frog experiments. They used to take out the heart from the frog, they used to put it in a beaker and used to do the experiment. You can take out a heart from an organism, still the heart gives contractions and relaxation. Even though you cut all the neuronal innervation, it can still gives the contraction that is known as automaticity. And that automaticity, the ability to contract by itself is because of nodes, SA node and AV node. 